I think the guide came out in 85. Theoretically, it was supposed to go to all of the churches. They were supposed to run through it, work through it. I don't remember at what point the general board of uh, certainly the general conference and obviously Mennonite church as well, um, somewhere in that the they really started pushing hard to have a statement then come out in 86. The committee uh, fought really, really hard against that. We've been talking about all of these issues for four years and were in no way ready to come up with any kind of statement that all of us could then say, this reflects our beliefs around mm -hmm. these topics, right? A whole bunch of churches then said, oh, well, if we're going to vote on a statement, why do we have to go through the, why even bother with the guide, right? Mm -hmm. So. I think for the most part, hardly any of the churches ever worked through it. I hardly ever hear of somebody who knows what that was, who even knows the process happened, and, and who knows, you know, who saw the study guide, much less than actually was a part of a church group that, that worked through it. committee gave its report right before the general board proposed the um, statement. So the committee went up on stage, GC chair uh, of the committee um, talked sort of through the process and what, you know, kind of what, what the committee had worked on over time, kind of a little bit about how it had done its work, um, what, what was happening with it. He made pretty clear that the committee did not think there should be a statement. And the church made stances uh, by way of these statements. So a lot of what went into these statements are what we sort of had to live with. That was always sort of um, outside of our control and that people were making these, these pronouncements and these statements about sin and what was sin and defining sin and defining who was in and out of the church. And there was always a sense that, that I had that, that we were sort of helpless and really couldn't um, we couldn't convince enough people, we couldn't change enough people's minds, um, people just didn't have the understanding to, um, to be more um, sympathetic or be more open to different points of view. There had been a, uh, a way of controlling the discussion of only allowing official delegates to use the mics for the discussion time. And um, at this point, it was already out at faith, and um, it felt really important to me to actually be one of the official delegates from faith so that if they instituted that same restriction again, that I would still have access to the podium. So I was the first person at the mic, um, and this is what I said. Uh, my name is Frank Trinka from Faith Mennonite Church in Minneapolis. I am a gay Mennonite and one of Faith's four delegates to this assembly. I was married to a fine Christian woman for nearly 11 years. Now that we are divorced, we continue to share parenting responsibilities for our two preschool children. I appreciate very much the Sexuality Study Guide and the work of the committee that prepared it. 
believing after a year of therapy with a Christian counselor that God was changing my sexual orientation and spending more than 10 years in an incredibly painful marriage, I can say emphatically that if the study guide might prevent one young gay or lesbian Christian from embarking on the path I chose, it will have been worth all of the expense and energy. It would be nice if the church could move to a position of being helpful to gay and lesbian Christians, being supportive of our best relationships. But I think a serious study of the guidebook can at least help the church to be less damaging to its gay and lesbian members and to their extended families. Afterwards, it was just, it was pretty much a marathon of um, people wanting to talk with me. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people who were just sort of puzzled and had never really known an out person before to ask questions. Um, and I sort of flippantly afterwards said I should have really had buttons to give out that people could wear saying, you know, I had lunch with a real homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, who's the, the Mennonite person who was most involved in uh, the ex-gay movement, was doing a workshop at Saskatoon, and I was pretty sure that I wouldn't have a chance to actually speak at that workshop, so I, I made this former ex-homo one as a way to just be present there. Ever since then, uh, I just have very little belief in statements. I just don't. It's like, what? The, all they do is cut off conversation. And it's what's happened. Um, there, there have been attempts to revive conversations around, uh, mostly around LGBT stuff, but even around other aspects of sexuality. And so to me, statements cut off conversation. They don't, they're not helpful. <laughs>